Hello YouTube, Blue Matona here, and welcome to episode number 15 of this Let's Play Total War Three Kingdoms as Gong Du campaign. Uh, where we left off last time, uh, we're, we're <laughs> fighting the looters, it's kind of what we always do in this campaign. Um, as tedious and maybe somewhat frustrating as it is sometimes, I, I actually, I really enjoy this game. Uh, you know, it doesn't get the same views and, and engagement as some other, um, you know, as my Rome videos on my channel, but I really like Three Kingdoms, and, you know, I plan on, uh, want to keep playing it. So... I did a little bit of research between episodes, and apparently, apparently looters can only spawn against you with two armies at a time. Uh, so what, what some people online recommended to do was basically almost leave them, like, two provinces, like, and, and let their two armies just kind of chill on the edge of the map. Now, obviously, I do have to guard against the possible incursion into my territory, but I just think we're going to have to get to a point here... Uh, and I think, unfortunately, we are where Wu Wei, I'm just going to leave this to be looters' territory. Um, I do want uh, Shuo Feng to be mine, and I do plan on finishing it off by getting the Animal Tamer. Um, but uh, Wu Wei, I think I'm going to just have to um, just have to commit to that being looters. And to that end, uh, let's get this army back over the border uh, into my territory so they're not losing a ton of military supplies because they're in enemy territory in the winter um and we'll have them come back to my territory and uh we can then move them somewhere a little bit more useful uh as i as you saw at the beginning with diplomacy map mode uh we are at war here on our kind of more like southwest border uh we have you know obviously the looters in the north and then our whole eastern border here, we are currently at peace. However, if we go to attitude mode, they don't like me. So, you know, war could end up uh, being there, uh, you know, taking place there in the future. We will see. Uh, in my court, we do have our new character. Uh, we haven't really explored him too much yet. Um, I might honestly just put him immediately into a local leader position uh, because I do want to fill those spots uh, with the fourth one. But um, first and foremost, we need to decide what we want to do with our he force here. Um, we can reach the farmlands um, here of Liu Yan in this... Oh, wait, no, we are on march mode. Let's stand, go back to normal. See, on normal, we won't be able to reach that territory this turn. And so I think because it is winter... And look, if I, I, mean, if I cross the border here, like, you'll see I am not losing that... I'm actually not losing at all any military supplies we get a character that's giving 20 military supplies i guess one of these characters has a um has a military supplies modifier or, or something uh somewhere in here one of these must be i can't seem to find it though i don't want to spend too much time just kind of looking for it but uh whoever has it i mean that's quite useful i just kind of want to know so i can maybe target that with uh other characters of the same type uh, is it, is it this guy? Is it Zidang? No. Yeah, guys, I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea what that's coming from. Um. Okay, frankly, I don't really care. Uh, that's fine. We have it, um, which means we can advance. Uh, in the winter, uh, towards the enemy city, um, which is which is outstanding, without uh, just completely nuking our military supplies. So we'll do that. That farmland's going to be nice and vulnerable for us next turn. And then, yeah, Liu Yan um, does have at least one other province here, which looks to be, based on the little icon, I, um, not a major settlement. I think that's the icon there for, like, a major settlement. So we'll see what that is when we get there. Obviously, this is an area of the map that I have not been to yet, so it's not at all uh, not at all explored. Um, but we'll we'll jump in, and then yeah, there here is is the city um, for Baxi. You know what I bet you it is. This is the city for Baxi. This is one of the other provinces in the commandery, and then that's probably the other one right there, <clears throat> which is good. We can we can move to. Oh no, here's the other one. I already own the other one. Okay, so that's a new commandery, um, and it's industrial. Okay. So, we do have this new court member. What is up with him? He doesn't really have the best... You know what? Let's actually just go into his uh, character screen this way. It's a little bit easier to, to kind of view everything. Um, he's composed, <clears throat> he's intrepid, and he's patient. A lot of expertise. Uh, expertise gives construction costs and melee evasion. Um, he has inner fire, a passive buff for melee attack rate. He has a 3.8k splash damage attack. 
Condemn. We have an encourage, encourage night gate night battles and guerrilla deployments um, for the army that he's in, and defiance, which is armor for his retinue and military supplies in enemy territory when commanding. He's probably not going to be a commander, though. Um, immediately, we can definitely up his weapons. I, I kind of don't really want to give him the Red Sisters. It's definitely my like best weapon that I have here. Um, we can. This one's pretty dang good too. Uh, this one, you know what? We'll give him this for now. Give him that weapon for now. Uh, no armor, no horse um, that we can give him. And then his current... Yeah, that guy's pretty bad. I mean, maybe we can... We can give him something... Like that gives public order for his administered commandery. And then maybe is there another administered commandery modifier here? That we can maybe give him... Hmm, not really. I mean, a little bit of like replenishment for his own army is kind of a nice one. We'll just give him that for now. Uh, I do want to raise a force with him. Um, I'm thinking, you know, maybe we can use it as a defense against the looters. Maybe we just kind of get another force positioned over here so we're not completely caught off guard uh, if someone attacks. But um, but regardless, you know, we are going to want to raise a force with him. But let's go ahead and we can make him add him to that post. That gives him satisfaction. Uh, no additional salary. And we get position effects. Uh, an additional available army minus 30% corruption in his administered commandery and income from all sources in administered commandery. Uh, and then the local leader effects that he gets himself is construction cost and plus four public order. Um, I wonder if there are, like, I know I can't do these people when they're on, you know, use them when they're on assignments, but I wonder if any of these guys who are on assignments maybe have a better effect. Uh, and also, because this guy is the only scholar, you know, we have, what do we have here? We have three healers and one veteran. Maybe using a scholar for an assignment will actually give me some additional effects um like you know as opposed to these assignments like scholars will have a different set of assignments they can possibly do so what i'm actually going to do is we are going to uh we're going to recall all of our assignees uh that's it's okay you know i think that's totally fine to do for a turn next turn we can take a full look at all five options and see who we want to make the local leader and then the other four can be on assignments but i think i'm going to actually want to save him for an assignment because he is a scholar he has a and it's a different um uh, you know, a different uh, potential set of abilities, you know, a set of assignments that he's able to do. So, yeah, faction rake ascended, and we still need to research rally noble sympathizers. We have four turns left. Hopefully we finish that this video. Um, so with all this money that we have, we want to make sure we save at least 4,000 for the animal tamer here. Um, but otherwise, we should be able to accomplish some buildings. Uh, Wudu, yeah, Wudu's upgrading right now. We have not much of a food surplus, so I don't want to up the city to the next level, although I would love to get it to large city. And yeah, public order is decreasing because population is now finally pretty high. Um, so we're going to, you know, I would love to upgrade this to the next level city and get like a, maybe a public order building. And I think we're going to have to start doing that in a bunch of our locations here. Um, as public order rises, oh, sorry, population rises, you know, it does begin to take that um, have that kind of heavy negative effect on public order. Like, see this this building here, the drinking house? Like, that gives a public order effect for the settlement, and that's what's counteracting um, the the population negative effect. Um, that's actually a pretty quick building up that another level. We could do that for 1,600. Let's focus quickly. Can I... I would love to upgrade, you know, food production. Um, food production buildings. I do think that's going to be... Uh, a limiting factor for us for a little bit here, so let's let's kind of focus in on that. See if there aren't any other food production um, locations that we can upgrade. Here we are. Do we not upgrade? That's literally what we just did. Uh, where's our fishing port? Oh, that's actually sorry. That's a trade port. There's the fishing port up north. Um, this building is always beneficial just for finances. So yeah, I guess we can get that going as well. Jihi, we could upgrade the fishing port for another food production. Um, this also gives a bonus 25% to food production. And this gives base food production. Let's do the bonus first. Let's get that going. The act Because right now there's no active... Uh, with the building that we have, there is no active bonus uh, to food production. So that's a straight 25% boost to food production, which will give us at least one, if not two more food in that settlement. And that brings us down to... Yeah, 2764... Um, we, we need more farmlands. I, I mean, just very frankly, like, taking this farmland here, Baxi, will be really nice. Uh, that's also, 
uh, an unfortunate side effect. Maybe we take Wu Wei just for the farmlands, and then don't forget about you know, for, don't worry about the city or the uh, horse pastures. Um, so that's also something that we can you know consider and and think about when we jump in there. Uh, as you can see, public order is on the whole pretty good across my um, empire currently. Uh, here, faction support uh, will help kind of even that out. But yeah, like Ji He, like that's just population. Wudu, that's just population. Uh, he Dong, population. Population. So these are cities that we want to expand and build public order buildings in um, to start counteracting the negative effect. Like He Dong is actually getting a little bit borderline weight, uh, you know, too negative here. Negative 57. It's just, it's too low. What we're going to probably want to focus on is um, maybe we send an assignment here to help boost the public order for a little bit just to just to raise it back up. And, you know, we can use assignments to our to our benefit for that. Um, all right. So we have court is set. Diplomacy, I think, for this turn is set. Oh, wait. Also, I did trade a lot of food like one turn in one turn. I'm going to get two food back from the trading I was doing with Sao Sao in one turn. I'm going to get food back here. Yes, okay, so I'm going to be getting some food back uh, from some of these people in, you know, the next one to three turns, terms from trading I did. Um, so that's actually, yeah, it's not quite as dire of a situation as I as I kind of thought it was at first. Um, which is good, which actually makes me think maybe like on a, on a city like Wudu, you know, I can uh, start that upgrade of the major settlement. Um yeah, okay, so I think we can kind of go to the next turn. Reform is researching. Armies have all moved. Let, let's move on. Let's move on. It's funny, I thought that was such a quick first turn. This is your last chance for peace. Liu Yan. You're that guy. <laughs> you want peace with me? I'm about to take your farmland. Uh, what are you offering? They're offering 2,900 gold. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of gold, but... Uh, no, frankly, I mean, I have no interest in peace with you. Um, I'm about to... Insult. You declared war on me, and I'm about to take your land. I, why would I... Why would I want peace with you? Doesn't make sense. Alright. So, not many pop-ups, just buildings. Uh, construction complete. We got the production courtyard in, in, uh, in Hidong. Um, the production courtyard gave another 100 income from industry, so that boosts our industry income here. And we get the Jincheng City expansion, um, which we'll is put our put our food negative. Why did I not get the food back from the? Oh, there's a zero turn. That's kind of annoying. So I don't get that food back yet. I get it back next turn. So that's going to be one turn that we actually will have negative food, which which is not big deal. Minus one food, uh, just minus four reserves and all your commanderies for one turn. That's that's fine. That'll recover in you know one turn as well. That's that's okay. Like, minus 13 food from Diplomacy. We're going to have to maybe not use that as much. But Jin Chang, here on our border in the north, did expand, which is very important for me. Um, primarily because... Okay, also, yeah, we get plus six public order from buildings already. Yeah, we got the Leisure House. Um, that's really important for me because I do think that this is actually a good city to build the uh, garrison in um, as a defense against um, looters that are coming in because we, we would it would basically double the city's garrison um, you know not I don't think there are any other buildings that actually provide garrison forces uh, for the settlement so garrison would be nice I don't know if uh, we're gonna build it that's 100% what we're gonna do um, but I don't know if a garrison combined with the city garrison that, that the base city has itself is actually enough to defend against a looter's army. It would be five units of seven units of swords, two units of spears, and five units of archers. I mean, that's a solid force. It's not a great force. But combine that with walls and towers and, you know, maybe that could actually do some good damage. Um, we'll think about what we want to do with that force for a second here. I, do I want the animal tamer? I mean, this is, you know, a legitimate, legitimate question. Um, I, I kind of forget. Do I have an other, another animal tamer anywhere else in the empire? Um, that's a horse pastures. I just don't know what it does. Because horse pastures is not a very, is not a very usable, you know, it's not, I mean, it's not a very great thing. It just recruitment costs for cavalry units and upkeep for cavalry units. You know, it's not amazing, but we can, we can go check it out. This this army does have really low, um, 
military supplies, which is pretty frustrating. Uh, negative supply factors. Oh, faction support in the province is taking a toll as well. Okay, maybe, you know, I mean, we're going to probably just kind of have to... I mean, we're going to have to move on towards that settlement. I, I do want to, you know, activate it uh, to be one of mine. Um, so we'll move on forward and then we'll activate it and check it out. But that's going to be a next turn issue. Uh, what we can do is we can jump in down here with the Siege of uh, Zetong here um, with He Yi's army. And it'll be just against the garrison force. So this should be a decisive victory. And let's go take him out. All right. Time for the fight. Yeah, we got some deployables. Not really going to need them. Um, really hate this weather. I wish it was. A, I wish there was like a weight system, like in some of the uh, some of the other Total Wars, but not the end of the world. Let's just kind of group our infantry block together here. What do we have in the? Okay, we got yeah, we got the archery masters, kind of half size unit, and some other archers. Let's get our three generals together. Um, we can get our three generals together along with. Oh, that's a spear unit. Cavalry. What do we have here? This is a heavy sword infantry special unit. Okay. Gotcha. I don't think I've really used this army too much in battle yet. I'm definitely not too familiar with their with their forces and the you know capabilities. But we can go ahead and start the battle. There's their army. Let's get group one. Why don't you position a line here? Archers behind. Off skirmish mode. Is this kind of at the base of a hill? Yeah, that's not the best spot to be, but we'll get that going. Let's get maybe like cavalry and the generals here. We can actually just kind of group them together. Why don't you all come up to this hill here? Uh, what do we have here for our generals? We got a active buff for melee invasion and armor, and a ooh 9.4k splash damage. She was a huge attack. We got an active buff for speed melee damage and a passive buff for range damage. And then we have immobilized and we have this, uh, yeah, okay, melee damage stuff. So yeah, that's, that's a good unit. Okay, archers have opened up. Nice. Uh, battle has officially begun. Uh, they are moving forward on us. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're actually re-hidden over here. We can go and push towards their archers in a minute. Um, yeah, we'll push towards them now so they don't get too many range shots on my units unnecessarily. Uh, we'll try to save the um, reinforcements here. Yeah, this is this force here is just going to wipe out these archers. Uh, they really won't stand a chance against two units of cavalry, three generals. Actually, we can just... Why don't we peel off, like, one of the generals for each one of these units? And yeah, there we go. It's just, uh, the battle has begun. Go ahead and charge in there, boys. Yeah, these spear units, G Militia, got kind of close. Front line is engaged. We can sweep a couple of these units out to the side, go and flank them. Yeah, this should be... This should be a pretty piece of cake. You guys here... Come on behind. You guys charge in. You guys charge in. Yeah, here's the whole grouping over here. Let's go hit those spears. And yeah, we can, uh... We can turn this around. Turn these guys around. Yeah, come on out. Let's go attack those men. We're just gonna kind of surround them. Uh, generals here. Go hit them. The rest of the cavalry. Why don't you hold up a sec and maybe just go... Go chase after that archer militia. Yeah, we can use his big uh, attack here. I kind of want to see it. Come on, use it. And that, I guess that was it. Uh, yeah, he didn't, uh, they kind of started routing on, on the way in there, so um, that's unfortunate. But yeah, pretty dominant win. I mean, it's it should have, you know, it should be, that, that should have been a straightforward win, and it was. Uh, we'll chase down some routers. Uh, we actually don't need to. Sorry, this is a city defense, so we just need to actually get them to route generally the first time. Uh, there we go. The front line is completely routed. We're just kind of waiting on these guys here. Let's see if, like, a, a charge with the general should be able to get him to route. Let's see. Let's see if that gets him out of here. No, they're kind of fighting it out. I mean, I respect it, but, you know, just route already. Let's end this. There we go. One routed. 
Oh, we can use our attack before maybe this will cause him. Oh, there it is. Nice. And that got some. That got some. The route. Yeah, horde of arrows still coming in. Well done, archers. And uh, that'll be that. Claim victory. Okay, let's see. Hopefully, this farmland will just instantly solve our uh, our food issues. And it, oh my gosh! Oh boy, did it! Oh yeah. Wait. During construction efforts in the new town, a section of bamboo scaffolding collapses. Okay. Ooh, that's not good. Crushing many men, leaving some dead, many injured. Um, this is an ending. Do nothing. Suspend the corruption. Construction. For five turns, plus two construction time commandery wide. Pay to resume construction, just 500. Or pay for doctors, which gives us plus 10 satisfaction faction wide for five turns. For only another 250? Yeah. We'll pay for doctors. Be a benevolent. And Huang Xiao and He Yi are oath sworn, which is great. And we got this farmland, which is giving us plus six food production from farming. And then I don't know how we got all the way up to positive nine um but we did and that's fine let's check out and ding quickly yeah there's and ding uh, i'm not sure what exactly it was that that went wrong here with the construction but it seems to be okay um but yeah long story short that um that farmland is enormous enormously beneficial uh you can see what a difference that instantly makes um for the uh, for my faction, uh, now we have breathing room to upgrade cities, and yeah, and now we are just missing the large town that is at the center of um, the Baxi province, but we do have the communal grain farms, and we do have the tool workshop, so nice. Uh, we need a reform to get the next level of communal grain farms, a reform that only takes four turns. I might do that. Okay, so now I think we can see the rest of Liu Yan's lands. Yes, it is just these remaining two provinces. Um, Liu Yan is listed as... Where is he? I totally missed him, didn't I? Liu Yan as a inferior, not not completely, not like Dong Pei Shan, negligible, but an inferior power compared to me. What that makes me think is it makes me think he has at least one significant army left here. Um, Shu is a huge province. It's level 7 small regional city. Level 7 town. Uh, you know, just to, for reference, I think the largest settlement that we have, it actually doesn't tell me here what the size of the settlements are. I thought it would. But I think the largest that we have is 5 currently. I don't think we have anything larger than 5. Uh, 5 to 6 adds another 4 food. I, I can't imagine what 7 takes. Um, but I would love to take that city. Uh, as you can see, yes, it is a it is a really powerful commandery. It has four, uh, well, three regions, four if you include the city, uh, and at least one of them is a farmland, one of them is a salt mine, and one of them is an armor craftsman. That is a nice combination. And there's another farmland here on the other side. Um, as we continue to advance south here, I don't know if I can take the settlement with just the one army, or if I I might need to bring in. A second force but to that end I also don't think we need to pursue the looters much more up here uh, I think we can actually take this force and uh, they are in march mode which is surprising because they can barely move um, but let's get this force down here as quick as possible and I, I wish there's I don't know if there's just not a way but I, I need to like make a watchtower or something like if I could put a watchtower here to keep an eye on what's going on in the north that would be really really nice um, okay, so let's do our court stuff. So we have this post, right, uh, the last local leader, and we were thinking about doing Quijin, um, but his, the position effects are the same, but his local leader's effects from him specifically, you can see those change based on who the person is. Uh, I also want to check this quickly before I do that, his assignment options, um, yeah, you can see they're different assignments than what I currently have available. We have the Inspire Populace, which gives a lot of public order with no negative effects. That's very valuable. The Construction Time and the Attract Talent for starting rank for recruits. So I, I, I don't want to make him... I don't want to give him that position. I want to keep him as... I want to use him as a in assignments because I think the public order one will be useful. All three of those are useful assignments, uh, truly. Um, and also I want to hold on to Tan Yu for assignments because he has a different stretch. So really I want to use one of the three healers... Um, to be the last local leader spot. So we have 
Quan Shiting, which gives minus three construction cost, income from peasantry 20%, and put six public order. We have Ma Zhuo Meng, which is just 6% construction cost, and Bei Bao, Shao, uh, Bao Shu, 6% construction cost, plus 5 food production, and plus 20% food production. So, where are our local leaders currently? Um, I'm not... Is there a way to see? I don't know. Because, like, the food production one would be really... Um, would be really valuable, for example, in a settlement like Anding... Um, but also, I I kind of like this woman's plus six to public order, because it's kind of something that we need. So I actually think I'm going to go with that for right now. I just... Plus five base food production with a 20% modifier seems really valuable. So let's see, if I put her in, is and Ding an option... It is an option. It is an option as a local leader. Let me see. Like, Anding's current food production is 18. 20 from farming, minus 2 from food distribution. That's just the small city. So it's currently at 18 in food production. If I put her in the settlement, it should go up to 23 and higher because of the percent modifier as well, right? Which would be hugely valuable. Because, I mean, food is, you know, to be able to expand my cities more. I think that's just so valuable. As much as I want the public order effect, I do think that's way more valuable. Let's let's do that, and let's add her into Anding, and then there she goes. And that also will give um, the little bit of construction cost savings as well. Uh, and we can see now in Anding, now we're making, oh my god, 27 food. So we, yeah, we went from 18 to 27 food. We now have a surplus of 18 um, yeah, that, that was well worth it. That was, that was the right, I think that was the right decision. That is way too much food to just, you know, pass up on. Um, so let's take a look here. Maybe, I think He Dong, quickly, let's do a little bit of management here for a second. He Dong, I think we're gonna want to use uh, our new guy, Kui Jin, and I think we're gonna want to do the Inspire Populace. It's, it, we need to get the, we need to get the public order recovering here in the settlement. Uh, we can do that with Inspire Populous. I think that's what we're going to do. And then we have three assignees left. Um, the two healers have our Silk and Spice and Commerce boost, have our Food from Farming and Income from Peasantry boost, and have the plus two starting rank for all recruits. Actually, they all have that. Right, this guy has Surplus Markets, which is also really, really good. Um, this all We also have another Food Production modifier and a Construction Time and Construction Cost modifier. Um, he Dong here does have that huge industry and commerce income. Um, its reserves are very, very low because I keep using this here, and that, that's the cost of reserves, which means if this city ever gets put under siege, it's kind of screwed. Um, but this is such a money-making effect. I mean, are there two settlements that I can kind of use that and swap between so the reserves don't ever get super low? I think there are, right? Like, don't I have another one that has a lot of industry and commerce income? I mean, 1.5k from industry, or 750 base and 240 base is pretty high. Um, like, here we have, well, yeah, 350 and 340. We could use it in Jingzhou. Uh, where else do we possibly have? Industry and commerce here. That is, yeah, we could use it in Wudu. Um, it's probably the only ones that are really worth it. Wudu is pretty good on reserves. Jingzhou, where is Jingzhou? Jingzhou is a little more inland as well and is pretty good on reserves. Maybe we use it in Jingzhou. Um, Jingzhou for right now. And, you know, and we alternate so the reserves don't ever get, like, completely, you know, taken away in any given um, location. So why don't we use Tan Yu? We do his uh, surplus markets in Jingzhou. And then we could use the food one. We, I think stimulate markets is good. Also, if I do want to raise a force, though. Like if I wanna if I wanna raise an army with um Can I not use him? Oh wait, I'm sorry. He with uh with the one that I uh Majua Meng who I use as the assignee, if I wanna like just raise a raise her as a force um somewhere, I could maybe do that. Um which would mean I would want this plus two starting rank for recruits one, but I don't think I'm gonna do that just yet. I don't think I need to. So we're gonna focus on stimulate markets. Let's find places with a lot of commerce, silk and spice. Um, 
240 base commerce and Hidong. Uh, this one has, yeah, commerce and silk, but it's only 200 combined. Um, 250 commerce, 225 silk, and Jin Chang. I think Jin Chang, we're going to want to use one of them. Absolutely. And what else we got? Commerce, 340 base. Uh, commerce and silk, 275 combined. Yeah, maybe, um... We could just do this one with a 340 base commerce in Jing Zhao. Do that. Alright. Assignments are back done. Alright, that, that stuff is done. Um... We have an army here with low military supplies. That's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna save the 4,000 to activate the Animal Tamer. Uh, next turn, those other two armies have moved. Uh, we do have a little bit of money we can spend. Um, so, you know, we can focus on an upgrade somewhere, like maybe, you know, income from industry there. Uh, there are a couple options, like Hidong down here. We could up another 100 income from industry, which, you know, would also be very nice. Yeah, I, I'm not... All of a sudden, I'm not as pressed on food, you know? Uh, it's not. It's not the... You know, completely crazy pressing matter that it was just just recently. Um, I would love to upgrade Wudu, but that's just too much money right now. If I want to do the city next turn, eh. sorry guys, just kind of deciding here. Uh, we could do a little bit of food production and peasantry income for seven fifty. That's kind of nice. Uh, a lot of passes, low Yang, not worth it. Um, maybe He Dong eighteen eighty. Another 100, 100 uh, industry income. We can do that. All right. And that's all we'll spend this turn. So here we come. Next turn. Let's see how Liu Yan responds. Um, Liu Zhang has declared war. Okay. Here comes Liu Yan. Nope, nothing. Yeah, no response. Okay. So let's check out this new war we're in. Should get a couple pop-ups here. Liu Bei and Dongfei Shan are at peace. Yes, that is the war that happened with us. Another war that doesn't really affect us. We got an ancillary, a military G. We do have a person of virtue available, so we'll take a look at that. And we got three constructions done. We got the Scholar's Library over here in Zixi. Uh, that gives us another 5% research rate and some enlightenment. We got the Leisure House in Hanzhong. Uh, the Leisure House gave us more public order and income from commerce. And we got the lookout posts in Jin Cheng. Uh, yeah, we probably want to keep that, uh, keep that up building chain upgrading. Um, which put me under 4,000 gold. <laughs> Classic. Uh, alright, let's check out this new war that we're in. Where is she? Lu Zhang. Alright, Lu Zhang, you are over here. Yeah, so this was my, this was my worry for a while was that this stretch over here wasn't really defended because I had to commit so much up here to the uh, looters. Um, you know, this army I could whip south quickly and just forget about the animal tamer. Um, bit of a bummer, but I think it's my closest force that can that will be able to get down here the fastest. Like, it will be able to get to this defensive position for the city in just one more turn. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. It, it hurts also to lose the replenishment, but I'd rather get to the city and then replenish once I'm there than possibly, uh, you know, be have this uh, this war right here on the border. So you can see she has the toolmaker and a level 5 settlement right there. Um, so we're going to have to turn our attention back to this front. It's been a few turns since we really had active battle there. Um, and then this force... Yeah, let's for the time being continue marching this direction. Um, I would love to let's just get like kind of like a view on the settlement if we can with this army. We can't without crossing the border. That's fine. Let's cross the border. There is the settlement. Currently, no army defending it. Um, very interesting. And we're up to twenty six food, by the way. Uh, surplus. Uh, very interesting. We could, in theory you know, put it under siege for a few turns as we wait for a reinforcing army to come, you know, try to starve it out because it's level 7 and I think I'm going to need to really take my time with that one. Uh, and you can see now, yeah, we are starting to kind of get pressed a little bit for the need of a fourth army, right? Like, it, we're starting to kind of 
see that. So who is this? Shen Hidang. Shen Hidang has no 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 good stuff. He's not holding on to anything good. He's not over 100 in any of this stuff. He is 21, so he's young. Um, all right, what do we got here? We got healthy, melee evasion and resolve, disloyal. Don't like that. Um, and careless. Yellow Turban Rebellion General. I mean, I, I just, I need generals, so we're going to take him in. Um, but I definitely won't be giving him any higher offices, uh, just because of his, uh, you know, what, like, like his tributes. Um, and it's also useful to have one more uh, scholar. Because now I can pull a scholar into an army. So, with that said, let's take a look at, like, Hidong. If I want to raise an army right now, I would have Bei Bei Xiao's force, and I would have uh, Shen... Hidang's force. Um, yeah. Bebe Shao, where are you? Bebe Shao. Trustworthy, clever, energetic. I like the campaign movement map range. She has splash damage attack. She has public order, local commandery, and stuff. That's kind of nice. Corruption, local commandery. And campaign, more campaign movement map range and speed for a retinue. Yes, yeah, she could be a pretty usable, uh, pretty usable on the battlefield for sure. Uh, we can give her, we can give her a really nice upgraded weapon. G of the Imperial Guard. She has her own really kind of like armor. No horse options, unfortunately. And um, I don't really want to get rid of this, because that plus 20% food production is nice. And honestly, neither of those other ones are great. But this stone fit, wooden fish is, is just a complete waste. Um, we could give her a bow. A bow for battle. I kind of really like that idea. Let's give her a bow. And we're going to raise an army with her. She's also fiery, which is great as well. Um, we're going to raise an army with her. Which means that I'm going to want to activate... I'm going to have to probably actually pull back one of these... Um, see what you're from Jin Chang or Jing Zhao. What is Jing Zhao's income? That's the one with just commerce. Yeah, we're going to actually pull back one of those and we're going to send out the assignment... Uh, that gives the plus two starting rank to all recruits, and then we'll uh, we'll raise the army in that location. Um, so I'm going to save my money this turn uh, as a result of that. We do have an upgrade, Tan Yu. Um, getting kind of up there, Tan Yu, 50 years old. All right, we got some upgrades. He is an assignment. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he's kind of what? He's on assignment, right? But he's also a general? Wait a second. Where, where the heck is Tan Yu? Is, is Tan Yu not this guy? No, that's... Oh, that's Z-Dang. Okay, I was kidding. Yeah, he's just on assignment. Okay. So, because he's just on assignment, we can give him something that gives an assignment boost to public order to local commandery. Let's just do that. All right, nice and easy. Nice and straightforward. Um, good, for, good job, Tan Yu. Low military supplies. I'm aware. I'm aware. Frankly, not much we can do about that right now. Um, okay. Armies have all moved. Two more turns left in the research. Uh, I'm saving my money. We dealt with the court. Uh, let's take a look quickly at diplomacy. If I wanted, like, peace with quick deal, Liu Yan and the Han Empire want it. I don't want it with either one of them. Um, what's a support vassal independence? Offer to declare war on the vassal's master. Nah, I don't want to do that right now. All right. And we got all this food back, I just realized, because the diplomacy, a lot of the diplomacy food came back. Um, now that I have so much, I, I know I kind of, it's kind of funny. I said I wasn't going to do this, but let's see if I can't get uh, a little I bit of finances is an offer for food. Um, yeah, he really wants it. You can see we usually we start at 1.5 or 1 for food here. 2.5 up to 4. So let's just see how long it keeps. So up to 4, we're getting 1 plus 1.5 per and then it drops to 0.5. So let's try to hit that sweet spot at 4. And if I request regular payments, you know, what, what, is that, what does that get up to? It, it actually could be a pretty nice number here. 
like, let's say I want 400 per turn for 10 turns, and then... No. Alright, won't give me anything more there, really. Uh, we, we could go up to, like, 410. 415. 418. Not 419, though. 418 for 10 turns. That's a pretty good deal. They do have some ancil... Nah, I don't really need that. Like, I could trade away a couple of these, you know, BS ancillaries, but I think that's okay. That's enough money. That's, a. Uh, I I think if I'm getting over 100 per turn for one food, I'll Your take that deal. Will be repaid. Sao Sao is also very poor in food. You again. Um, so let's see again, like, kind of what we would get here. See, this only starts at 1.5 and then immediately goes to 2. So it's not really... Um, worth it. And he's not going to offer any money, so no. Sao Sao, we're not going to do any deals with you. We are at war with you. Um, Dong Pei Shan, very poor in both, not worth it. Liu Bao, poor in food and rich in, um, and rich in finances. That's what we're looking for. We can maybe just look to start at 1.5. Uh, yeah, so we can get, yeah, you know, we can get about, if we can get about 100, again, like 100 per food, I think I'm, you know, going to be... That's that's very... That's a 105 for 10 turns for one food. Yeah, I'll take that. We are obliged to you. Absolutely. Um, we can just take a quick look through some of the rest here. Uh, very poor and equal. Han Fu. Choose your like, just see what kind of, uh, what kind of stuff they're going to offer. You know, like, again, 1.5 and... Yeah, see, they're not going to offer a much higher, like, 60. No, that's not... That's not really worth it unless you got, like, a good ancillary for me. No. That's not worth it. Lady Shu Rong. Very poor in food. Yeah, over here. We might end up at war with them. Gonsung. Shuxiang. Oh, it is you. A lot of a lot of these AI factions are very poor in food. And again, we're only starting at 1.5. She's not gonna offer anything. Not worth it. Um yeah, okay, I think that's good enough. We got like another five hundred per turn for ten turns, just from uh just from that little bit of diplomacy with two guys. Uh, so that's going to help us with our army forming up here, which we're going to be doing. And we can move on to next turn. Alright, there she is. There's her army. Uh, that's why it was so important. I had to get that force back down uh, to that, you know, eastern front quickly. Um, so that they can't just go jump a city without any defense force there. Although... <sighs> so annoying. So annoying. Alright. This force here. Two generals and some units. Can like... Well, see, I wouldn't... I wouldn't win that city fight. I mean, you... You gotta be kidding me, right? Like... Another force just appears. Another stack of looters. Three, or two generals, because that's just a captain. Oh, actually, both are captains. Just one general. I do have a garrison here now. Not enough to defend against it. Does it have to be jetties? No, I can demolish that, right? No. It has to be jetties, huh? I was going to say, I would love to just instantly build a garrison there. Um... Man, that's a really interesting choice, because I, I could... Actually, I can't even get back to that city to defend it this turn. Jesus, I moved from, like, up here. Alright. I mean, ultimately, we need another army. No doubt, we need another army. Uh, so I want to raise this army, if possible, maybe just across the river. Here. Like, maybe if I raise this army up in Anding, that would be the perfect spot for it. So let's take assignments... Um. Huh. Do I want to... No, because we, we're going to use the other healer for the army. So let's take assignments. We're going to do... Uh, plus two starting rank for all recruits. Next turn we'll raise up that force. And what do we do buildings-wise? we got the figurine carving workshops in Wudu. Uh, that should help with finances. Yes, that adds more income and com uh, commerce and industry. Small town in Shuofeng, and Militia Depot in Jincheng, and then yeah, we can upgrade this to the next level. 
Does the garrison never actually get bigger? No, just the quality of troops uh, increases. Um, hmm. That's okay. We'll, I mean, we're going to want to keep that upgrading. And now I have to decide. This force here... This force here is in Force March, and it can barely move. But I also... I mean, the city's lost. They're going to attack the city next turn. I can't get back to defend it. Can I split this guy out? I might split the force. We're going to split the force... When drawing a bow, hold the bow. And we're going to move the larger force here back towards the looters. As one, we move. I mean, they're just they're going to loot the settlement. I just it's so annoying that there's literally nothing I can do. Body and, spirit. and then this force, we're going to continue okay. to move on for a defensive purpose. And it will just kind of fight in conjunction with Garrison uh, in a defensive role against an, a force here that it can definitely take out. And then we'll come and we'll relink the forces together uh, down the road. This is, I mean, like, this is so frustrating. Like, is the city even worth it? Yeah, it is, because it is worth it. Um, the question is now, what do I want to do with this army? Because on one hand, I do feel that I am going to need... If I keep moving along towards the city, I do feel that I am going to need reinforcements to take it. Actually, surprisingly not. It says I should have a decisive victory. The garrison is tiny. Even with the level 7 settlement, it has no bastion artillery. Just some barricades and... No, this is totally winnable. You can build up a tower, continue siege for a turn. Okay, wow. So that's completely winnable against a level... I thought the level 7 city would be a huge pain to take. But apparently not. So then this force... We can... Yeah, we're going to move this force then this direction. This turn. Switch going this way, please. Uh, and this will bring it back towards this eastern front line. Um, as we sort of cede this territory to the looters. I wish I had just kept that force within reinforcement range of the city just in case. I didn't think the looters would reappear so quickly. Um... But that's okay. We did, uh, we did get this city at least set up. Okay. Um, five thousand. I'm gonna save that again. I'm gonna save the money so I can raise a force, uh, a quality force, rather quickly when I have the opportunity to start doing so next turn. Um, and this is just low military supplies notices. So yeah, I'm not going to really keep any building going unless there's like a really cheap option that I can do. But I, I, I kind of think I've, I've sort of exhausted those. Um, I didn't get another person of virtue, right? No. Alright, on to the next turn it is then. Let's see how the looters are going to... The looters are going to take the city. Uh, they just are. Yep, they're advancing towards my city. I'm glad I moved that army in defense. Oh, hello Liu Yan. Liu Yan appeared with a full force. Okay. It's going to add a little wrinkle to this region. The looters attack the city. Um, it's just the half-strength garrison. I, I'm just going to delegate this one. I'm not, you know... It's, I'm not going to win it. Super frustrating. And they, they demolish the city. Ha! So typical. Yes, I know I lost the settlement. Thank you. Mission success. Rally noble sympathizers. Awesome. That should give us a nice piece. Okay, what do we get here? Maintain a total of one units of, of a virtuous nobleman type unit. And that gives us a nice weapon and 4,000 gold. Uh, yes, we finished that research. There's the ancillary gains. The book of the people. Character developments. We got a person of virtue. Buildings. We got Jihi. Peasant family houses. Finished up. Which gives, yeah, food production, and uh, now we're making nine food there. Communal sharecropping in Shenyang. Which one? What was that? This? Okay, that's just food production and peasantry income. Nice. Alright. Let's take a quick look here. Are they in reinforcement range of the city? The they are. Alright. 
So if I were to attack the city now, there would be this whole force, which is a lot of archers, uh, defending it. And my force, which has three generals and some anti-missile cav. Would I be able... What does it think? It thinks it's going to be a valiant defeat. The question is... Can I intercept that other force before they get to the city? Because they're coming in as reinforcements. They're not in the city itself. I'm sorry about that. Um... Anyway, long story short, we do have the Siege Tower. I think we're going to start this battle. I think this force is so going to be so vulnerable. We can go to, If we can go take out these generals, um, Cheng Dong here, like, if we can go take them out, which I think is doable, I think we'll win this fight. Alright, time for a large fight. Now, I'm sorry, I got a little bit of a cough all of a sudden there. Uh, and we're going to do exactly what we planned on here. There's where the reinforcements are going to come in. We're going to jump these guys. We're going to take them out before the city's even an option. And, um... Let's leave our... We'll just leave our tower, like, right here. And we'll, we'll pick it up when we're ready to go assault the city itself. But, yeah, let's take the guys off it. And we are going to do this, set this up very carefully. So, first and foremost... Let us get all of our infantry troops together here. And we're going to put a very long line. I don't want any of these guys being able to sneak around me. <clears throat> Generals are going to have to be heavily involved. And they are going to be there with the cavalry. And then we have our units of archers and you guys just fire at will do your worst take them out we can put a anti-cav deployment here so no cavalry can hopefully run that direction and we'll also even put the uh boiling oil right in the center here and let's start this fight and we are going to try to you know, we're going to pick off these reinforcements And immediately here, you can see the cavalry and the generals charged in. Let's get my generals down the line. Can I, how do I... Can I not activate the... No, oh, are you on... No. I need you in there. Yeah, the general is trying to kind of run, it looks like. Yeah, he's trying to run through to the settlement. Your rebellion is over, scum. Shut up and die. Let's push forward with some of these infantry units. And just really focus on getting them here. Knocking out all these guys. He can go in the settlement if he wants. Yeah, generals here. Generals, get on there, general. All this infantry. Come on, pull into the fight. And this is just going to be a complete slog here. And that's fine. Because the goal is just to, is just to take him out. You guys, can we, can we hit that cav on this flank? Cav might have escaped through. But just in case they're coming after my archers. Looks like they are. I don't know how that cavalry got around. We're gonna just chase after them. How my generals doing? Come on, generals. Need you to pick it up a little bit. These units, let's move in. All these units here. Let's just turn and hit that cavalry, please. Almost got one general down. Yeah, stay on them. Where's my cav- Oh, my cavalry got completely wrecked, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, they, they got a little wrecked. Alright, there we go. We should be able to get this general. There we go. Let's go after the other one. You guys, come help out there. This unit over here is... Uh, they're holding. They're holding their own. Are all my generals... No, they're still on horseback. Yeah. Can we go chase her down, please? No, they're not going to catch her. That's okay. Come, come form back up. You, general, you're clearly not on horseback anymore. You... You go hit those archers units. These guys on horseback. Yeah, we should be able to take her out here. Stay on the archers. Stay on those marksmen. Two, two guys still on horseback. Finish her off already. Come on. Come on, finish. Come on. Just get one hit away. Come on, get her. Seriously? Alright, we need we need to pull a general off. Is, is she really going to escape out of here? That's ridiculous. This general, jump in the fray. Let's try to start getting rid of some of this infantry here. One of my units is running. Yeah, definitely took, I mean, definitely took some damage. Uh, 100%. You know, in this fight. Um. Does battle wear you out? But, uh, you know, but we're going to win it. This this archer's unit is doing surprisingly well. My archers... Can you actually halt? I want to want you to take out some of those towers on the walls before you completely run out of ammunition. And yeah, we're starting to get good press on these guys. Why don't you guys go after those archers? Those guys are chasing them. Where is... Yeah, she's just quicker. She's going to make it off the field of battle. That's too bad. Almost got her. 293 health left. But she's going to make it out of here. Alright. Let's turn you this way. Go after those archers. Yeah, take out those GU. Just kind of continue in the fray here. You guys can... The rest of this infantry here. Go after them. This infantry here. Charge in that way. Definitely was a little bit hard too to, to see through the uh, good trees, but yeah, we knocked a lot of them out. You guys can stop. All right, so let's get my infantry group, and now we're gonna start. We're just gonna tell them to march over here. Let's start forming up for a eventual assault on the walls, as obviously was like the original plan of this this whole this whole battle, right? So we'll get them everyone moving into position. Yeah, that unit's completely out of it. That's fine, you guys can stop. Third general, getting there. Alright, we're gonna go to fast forward until our units get into position here. Uh, a lot of these units are definitely, uh, maybe not so much those guys, some of these units are a little, a little worn out. Why don't we just get everyone rushing up into position? Um, and do we have, actually, do we not even have fire arrows? We have fire arrows on one of these units. Alright, so I would love to, if possible, knock out that tower. We'll see if I have enough here uh, to knock out both. Let's move that unit forward. Who's running? What, what, what made them run? There's no fighting left going on right now. Alright, well, they rallied, so that was kind of weird. Alright, this force is, uh, they're almost in range, Let's move them up a little further. And then take out that fort tower, please, and thank you. Let's see how much fire damage you do with one barrage. Alright, about 20%. That should, uh, yeah, that's, that should be good enough. We should be able to take it out here before our unit runs. Yeah, there we go. 43%. We'll, we'll knock it out. Knock out the fort tower. And then, what's the range on this other fort tower? Uh, it overlaps. It gets actually quite large. Maybe we'll try to take that out, too. It'll depend on their ammunition. There's also another fort tower here. We got a few issues. Alright, fire damage is 100%. So you guys are good. You guys are good there. Why don't we advance this way? Let's go take out that other fire tower. 
And then who do we want to take the... Yeah, this almost full unit. Why don't you take the Siege Shower? The rest of my men are still just kind of taking a while, but they're getting in position. Yeah, we'll attack right on this stretch of wall here. They have the tower. Almost. They're, they're climbing it. I'm getting set up. Look at that. Everyone get formed up on the tower, please. And they are almost ready to go. There we go. Let's move in on that stretch of wall, please. That will avoid this tower on the right. Let's actually go a little bit lower over that way. And it will be out of range of that tower on the left. So that's a good stretch. And then, yeah, we're, we're taking out that tower here. Fire damage is almost up. This one's almost destroyed. 85% damage. Yeah, fire damage here is... This unit's taking, uh, taking some significant hits, but um, it's worth it. They're just sent us out. You know, we need more more archers in this army that can shoot fire arrows, and this would, you know, this would go a lot quicker. All right, there we go. Fire damage is up on all of them. Why don't we take our archers' force? Let's make sure we're out of this range of this one, and we can position them like here, and that will be where our archers can just start, you know, laying shots uh, shots into the city. Our infantry force, on the other hand. Uh, well, everyone other than the tower. Um, yeah, everyone other than the tower. Please move up into position. Same with the generals. Move forward, please. And yeah, that should keep everybody out of range of this far tower over here. Yeah. Just out of range. And yeah, you can see we're starting to get some archer shots in here now. Just kind of, you know, messing with the spear guards a little bit. And let's go to speed three. We'll go to speed three until we get to the, uh, until we get to the walls. Uh, and it looks like we are... Oh, we're still taking shots from this tower because it's not fully destroyed yet. Okay, that's fine. Should be destroyed any second now. There we go. Now we won't take any more shots from over there. Uh, Archer's unit, why don't we... Why don't we move you guys a little further up here? Out of range of that still. And then the infantry block. You guys can get up there. Yeah, Archer's, I want you to start... These guys are gathering on the walls. I want you to start returning fire if possible. Alright, but our first unit is on the walls. And, uh... Let's move and go get start fighting. Infantry block, if you could start climbing up the tower, please, to join the fight, that would be great. Let's do it. There they go. Now everybody's going to start swarming to the ladders, swarming to the walls, and then it's just a melee. My archers should be opening fire, right? I mean, there we go. There we go. Okay, I was about to say. These guys are out of ammo. If you're out of ammo, you can get the heck out of here. But yeah, we're starting to rain down shots now onto the top of the walls themselves. More and more infantry is just going to keep pouring up. And here we go. Who else is out of ammo? These guys? Alright. You guys can get out of here then. Generals, where's the... Uh, the general that's on foot. Why don't you? Uh, why don't you climb up onto the wall as well? The two generals that are not on foot, that are on horseback, we're gonna wait for the gatehouse to open up. You can see now it is just a it is just a full on, full on melee fight up here on the walls, basically. And yeah, everyone is just uh, just pushing in, and we're gonna we'll put it on fast forward. Uh, it's getting a little laggy here, um, but we'll put it on fast forward, and we will, uh, yeah, we'll press, uh, we'll keep pressing forward. Our general, looks like he's coming up the ladder, he should be in any second now. The men have no ammunition, draw your weapons! Yeah, yeah, most of my archers are about to run out of ammo. Alright, they did a good job. 
the melee fights up on the walls. We can actually group in that general now because he's part of it. And we're gonna we're gonna have to take out these spear guards here. Yeah, they're gonna they're kind of the more powerful kind of key unit. Maybe we uh maybe we bring these men off the walls. Let's get them down. Uh, off the wall. the wall tends seems to to tend to be a pretty laggy setup for some reason. Uh, whenever there's guys on the walls fighting, the game really starts to lag up. Uh, archers here. Why don't you guys get out of the battle? We don't need you anymore. And yeah, we've almost captured the gate. Almost. And when we have captured the gate. Let's get these generals in the city. Uh, sometimes I guess it takes a second to, to kind of realize <laughs> that the gate is ours now. But yeah, we're gonna we want to we're gonna need to fight these spear guards, generals especially. If you want to get up to the front, that would be really nice. Let's get you up there into the fray, please, so I can use your abilities. But maybe you can't use the abilities on walls. That's fine, but at least if he's on the front line, we should start taking out these guys a lot quicker. Yeah, this is really their last, like, significant defense unit. They got a couple units of archers. They got, like, some guys here in the center, but this is this Spear Guards is their last, like, really good unit. And they're down to 80, so um, they should... They're shaken. They should, uh... They might be routing out sometime soon. Can I get these guys in the city yet? No, not yet. I think we need to clear the gatehouse here of the rest of these forces. The enemy warriors are there we go. They ran. All right, perfect. All right, if they ran, let's get these guys off the walls and get them involved here. There we go. My units are starting to come into the city. Let's go after. We can go after this archer unit. Come on, generals. Can you move in already? Gatehouse is clearly mine. There they go. I think. Well, it looked like they were. Now they're not again. Oh god, this archer's unit, 118 archers, is really going to stand up to this one. What are they firing at that way? There's another 65 spear guards there. I mean, we can just move forward here. Why don't we just go take that, uh... Take that next level of towers. Jeez, yeah, I'm trying to get my guys off the walls to fix the lag. That's why I keep putting it on speed 3 to get through here. You can see it's already starting to clear up as we get more and more off the walls. It'd be really nice if I can get these guys in. Will it open up for them now? There we go. Alright, yeah, now I can chase after the archers with the two generals on horseback. And the rest of the infantry can just, yeah, can continue their advance forward. There's a little bit of a defense here uh, at those towers as well. But now that I have horseback generals in the settlement, um, we should be in a pretty good spot. Does anyone want to duel? Character cannot duel. That's unfortunate. We'll keep those guys on them until the archers are taken out. And, um... Yeah, this force, why don't we just... Why don't we advance on them head on? No need to waste time. See if we can't take these guys out here. Come on. Any second now, these archers should break. They haven't yet, which is very surprising. There we go. They broke. Let's make let's make sure they're fully shattered. Don't want them coming back. Put on speed two. How about that? Yeah, this is just kind of like getting our way through the settlement. All right, there we go. They fully broke. Cavalry advance forward. We're going to take out those spear guards now. Yeah, this unit had already routed, so they should there. I was going to say, they should go pretty quickly. And then let's loop these guys around the backside of the uh, the forces that are stationed here. As the front side, well, let's just go ahead and, and charge in, because why not? Yeah, we can actually go take the towers out from behind them. It's kind of funny. And yeah, the rest of this, I'm surprised it's still giving them, like, such a percentage chance to win on the bar. Because this, this settlement is, is completely ours now. And let's just go, 
We're gonna go charge in on these, uh, we took the towers, let's go charge in on that cavalry as, are these men charging on the front line? And yeah, the generals here should take out the cav pretty quick, that general's running. Oh, look at that attack, breaking through the line, love it. And yeah, they're trying to bring in reinforcements, but this battle's all but done. Again, I'm surprised they, uh, this is even still, like, a fight. Like, I'm surprised these units haven't routed out yet. Any second now, those spear guards should break. And when they do, you, why don't you go after the G? Cavalry is surprisingly lasting pretty long, too. There we go, they broke. And let's see, yeah, now there we go. There's the routing cascade, and we're done. Alright, finally. Um, that was like their last stand, I guess. Uh, we can claim victory and end the battle there. And that's a big win. I mean, level 7 city, and we took out the other army, a large part, large part of it in the process. Um, we could actually loot and occupy, which will reduce the settlement level by one and give us a nice amount of money. Um, I don't really mind that option because it's already, I mean, do we, I mean, it would be kind of nice to have a level seven settlement though. So let's just occupy it. Let's just occupy it. I shall bring piety to we have the food to afford it. And I think having a level seven settlement with five buildings is, is pretty cool. Faction developments, he has a new capital, occupation, ancillaries gains, a white stallion in that battle as well, just awesome. There's where the army retreated. Uh, he has the armor craftsman and this farmland left. So, um, let's do some quick management on the city. I don't know what, armor craftsman, I, I would assume is industry, salt mine's definitely industry, that's farmland. He's got satisfaction building with public order and income from commerce. I like that. He's got another public order building. Don't know if we need two public order buildings here. Um, I'm going to think about that. Honestly, I, I kind of need to run, and this video has been going on for a pretty long amount of time. So I'm going to call it there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know, please leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, I look forward to seeing everybody next week in the next episode. Have a good one.